Shalom. Shalom and welcome. Welcome to End Time Reflections. My name is Simonai, if you're tuning in for the first time, and these are the words I am compelled to present before an awakening set-apart nation. This is the 52nd installment of this podcast series, and I want to bring your attention to the words facing sound decisions. Facing sound decisions. By now, many of you might realize that I mention often how vetting and examining all things are important and will prove to be a process demanded of Abba Yahuwah. Believe it or not, unity will come for Set Apart Yasharal, and we will come to discover that in Abba Yahuwah's promised discipline, that unity will emerge as we witness the 144,000 begin to rise in the great multitude, as mentioned in Revelation 7th chapter. It would be wise to begin to ask ourselves, what would prevent us from being led astray during these last days? And try and pray and seek to discern all that is necessary to avoid being led astray. It would be wise to discover how to move throughout all the noise, uncertainty, and confusion. My brothers and sisters, I know many of these messages may seem repetitive or redundant or recirculating, but I say to you, have you looked at a day when emergency vehicles, all of them took the day off and there were no sirens, no warnings? Have you witnessed a time come when cataclysmic conditions, emergency situations arise and there were no warning? And you desired and say, I wish I had a warning. Well, I say to you, O Yasharal, I'm compelled to repeat over and over and over much that you have witnessed. And there are those who will get it the first time, the second, the third, and some just starting to get it. But make no mistake, my brothers and sisters, end times will prove that we are facing sound decisions. Our emotional, mental, psychological, even our spiritual state will be put to the test. Look around, my brothers and sisters. Things are not going to return the way they were last year or before such times. Consider the following. For these words are important, and I speak of the need to prepare and to begin demonstrating what is necessary to come together in unity. Let me read Matthew 24, 4 through 8. Yahushua answered, said to him, Take heed that no one leads you astray. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they shall, not maybe, shall lead many astray. For you should begin to hear fightings and reports of fighting. So not only hearing it, there will be reports of fighting. It says here, see that you are not troubled, for these have to take place, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation and reign against reign, and there shall be scarcities of food. Just because it has not reached our doorstep does not mean people are not going hungry. Many people are detached or unsensitive and ignore those who face hunger on a daily basis. Let us pray for them, my brothers and sisters. It says, for nations shall rise against nation, rain against rain, there should be scarcity of food, deadly diseases. What do you think COVID-19 is if it's not a deadly disease? An earthquake in places, and all these are the beginning of birth pains. My brothers and sisters, so many have le leaned on and believed that we would be raptured and out of here. So many believers, so many pursuers of righteousness, and they are gradually beginning to realize there is no pre-tribulation rapture. We are in the midst of birth pains like never before witnessed. The narratives get changed daily. Man, governments, nations are introducing narratives absent of recognizing that the promise, discipline, vengeance, and wrath from the Almighty Father, these have begun. Given all that unfolding, the need for comfort becomes a great, a great challenge, a great task trying to decide, discern, Determine how we can be comforted, how we can comfort others. 
There are people who are having loved ones that are dying and they cannot attend the funeral because of COVID-19. There are people that cannot travel. There are many fears, but we are to fear the Almighty Father Yahuwah, for in doing so we will gain the knowledge that is necessary for directing our footsteps, Yasharal. Facing sound decisions is real. Let me be, read Matthew chapter 6, 25 through 34. It says, because this I say to you, do not worry about your life and what you shall eat or drink or about your body, what you should put on. Is not life more than the food and the body more than the clothing? Look at the birds of the heaven, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into storehouse, yet your heavenly Father does feed them. Are you not worth more than they? And which of you, by worrying, is able to add one cubic to his lifespan? So why do you worry about clothing? Note, well, the lilies of the field, how they grow. They need the toil nor spin. And I say to you that even Sholomo, some would say Solomon, in all his esteem was not dressed like one of these. But if the Almighty One so clothes the grass of the field which exists today, tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, how much more you, O oh, you of little belief? Do not worry then, saying, what shall, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all these the nations seek for, and your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these. But seek first. But seek first the reign of the Almighty One and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Let me pause for a second, my brothers and sisters. It says, seek first in all these things. How many people have had a teacher, a more, a brother or sister, state that by seeking first, these things will be added? Because, see, if you seek the Almighty Father first, then you'll see what it is He's adding and what it is He wants you to have. See, many people are grabbing after raiment, clothing, apparel, things, stuff, and boasting and saying, I'm blessed. I found favor. Not giving any thought to, is this the thing? Is this the stuff the Most High Father, Yahuwah, would have me to carry about, wear, show? Seek Him first, my brothers and sisters, and then we can discern what it is that he is adding before us. He goes on to say, Do not then worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow shall live its own words, for each day has enough evil of itself. He's telling us not to worry. We seek him, we trust him, we believe in him. My brothers and sisters, many will use this verse to say, Don't worry, I'm not worried, y'all got my back, y'all's going to take care of it. But we must seek him first so that we can pay attention to what he's directing our eyes and ears and footsteps. To respond to. My brothers and sisters, you may wonder why I use the words facing sound decisions. It can mean a lot to many. In one case, it is about once you make the decision, there's a lot of noise that will follow. And I realize the context could very well mean something else, such as the state of mind of an individual. Sound decisions. Are they making decisions with the right Guidance with the right discipline. Let me read Matthew 10, 34 through 30. I mean, 34 through 36. Matthew 10, 34 through 36. It reads, Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to bring division, a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, her mother, a daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law, and a man's enemy are those of his own household. You see, my brothers and sisters, in this great gathering, in this final exodus, in the rise of the 144,000 in great multitude, there will be some separation. There will be times of coming away. There will be some times of separating. In some cases, the separation will be merely repositioning, putting individuals where they're supposed to be. In some cases, it will require purging or coming away from such individuals. The realities of end times bring about the need for facing sound decisions with confidence that we are making the correct choices. As end times ramp up, my brothers and sisters, we will witness time to leave, time to move. 
Consider Matthew 19, 29 and 30. Matthew 19, 29 and 30. And everyone who has left house, houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many who are first shall be last and the last first. My brother, my sister, not many care to discuss the realities of leaving someone behind, coming away from someone. Especially those that it mentioned, brother, sister, father, mother, wife, child, for Yahushua's name. Facing sound decisions will come to be. It will cause arguments, heartache, pain, and regret, to say the least. It will prove to be one of the most challenging times in our lives, O Yasharal. It is my position that as movement begin to ramp up, many people will find themselves caught in massive congestion. The time is now for individuals to sound warnings, to stir up actions for preparedness, for movement, for repositioning. What's stirring in your body, my brothers and sisters? What does your spirit move you to do? And is that in line with what the spirit of the Almighty Father Yahuwah Sending Yahushua's name is saying for you to do regarding sound decisions. The time is now to weigh all that is necessary for migrating from one place to another, step by step until we reach our final destinations. My brothers and sisters, for those who may not believe that I don't understand the definition of sound mind, I just want to take a moment to read it. It's that state of a man's mind which is adequate to reason and comes to a judgment upon ordinary subjects like other rational men. What will prove to be the most unfortunate is that we are about to discover as we face sound decisions that the process in which we come to a conclusion needs some polishing, my brothers and sisters. Wouldn't you want to know how the one you may just be trusting in for guidance, in or help, whether they know how to determine the right decision for you, or you for them, or you for us? Do individuals that we are close to, are they including their plans? Are they listening for a plan? Are there discussions of a plan? To manage the decisions we must face ahead. Have they truly earned your trust? Yashra, O oh set apart family, if we begin discussing the matters of setting priorities and discern how to move about continually filled with the Spirit now, it will take the sting, it will minimize the pain that is about to occur. I say often, I say often, and we'll continue to speak on the matter of discussing the realities of end times. End times are here. Why aren't there individuals talking about the realities of what's described? What are the characteristics of the things that are prophesied? Are we seeing that now? Are we witnessing? What is it that will happen that will cause me to move? Questions, my brothers and sisters. Are we pursuing how to discern what to do and press forward? Not looking back as end times ramp up, as it bring extreme humbling times. Are our leaders pressing the need to be able to discern and respond correctly? Or are they busy lifting themselves up or bragging and boasting on what they did yesterday or last year? Are they equipping us with what to do in the event of their demise, their absence? Are they teaching every individual within their flock how to pursue the will of the Almighty Father and stand firm on his living guidance? If not, it's time for a change. Be encouraged, O set apart nation, my family. Trust and believe that this is the plan of the Almighty Yahuwah. We will learn to discover his presence among us. And we will begin to come together, those who have been chosen to fulfill these last day prophecies. Behold, the hand of the Almighty who is rising.
we will soon realize that it is necessary to identify Abba Yahuwah's living orders sent in Yusha's name. There are those who will fight and wrestle against what will prove to bring structure and unity among a set-apart nation. Gird up, my brother, my sister, my family. There are things that must and will come to be fulfilled that include more than we can imagine. I will end at this point, but remember, there are processes, there are details for when we find ourselves facing sound decisions, whether it's regarding our state of mind or the choice that is necessary for fulfilling end-time prophecies. Moving through the noise, we will learn what must be done. Until next time, I pray. I pray that we continue to grow and seek to discern the voice of the Spirit of Yahuwah sent in Yusha's name. I pray that we recognize that there is work ahead of us, that we come away from slothfulness and laziness, that we rise up, that we know what it means to seek wise counsel, that we know what it is to pursue righteousness and improve our worship. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, there is much more to come. I invite you to stay tuned and continue to pursue what the Almighty Father has to say. I say to you, my brothers and sisters, on that note, I bid you much shalom and continued encouragement. Shalom.